Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner. I got this email from my VIP member named Stuart, and he says he's working on a mix, and he tends to do the bulk of the work on the mix during the loudest section of the song to get it sounding good, but then he finds that the quieter sections are too quiet, and he's trying to figure out what's wrong, and so... We thought we'd try this. He sent me his actual Studio One session. I'm going to open up now and see if we can investigate and figure out what's going on here. So I've got Studio One open. Here's the file that he sent. I've not opened this yet. So you and I are seeing this <laughs> for the first time together. Let's see if everything loads up. Okay, looks like there's some Melodyne in here. There's some samples. There's one plugin on the main fader that I don't have uh, total tonal balance control, but otherwise everything else I should have. Okay, so let's just real quickly just go through, I'm gonna adjust some settings just so I can see what I wanna see. So what do we have here? We've got, I'm gonna zoom in on these waveforms just so I can see what's what. Uh, there's a lot of things happening here. So we got good amount of percussion, drums kinda come in towards the end. Looks like the song doesn't get big until this kind of solo section there um, because full kit doesn't come in until there. We've got like tambourine and shakers coming in, okay? We got orchestral bass and then real bass guitar comes in there. Got a bunch of acoustic guitars, center left, right. Bunch, a bunch of acoustic guitar. Sounds like a Joe Gilder production here. A good amount of electric guitars. They don't come in until about here. And then it looks like they get very big there. Let's zoom out so we can see a little more what's happening with these waveforms. Lots of electric, some in stereo, okay. Good amount of keys here. We got a pad and then a choir, which I'm guessing might be, I'm assuming that's a keyboard as well. There's electric piano down here, regular piano with a couple of extra tracks for some different lead parts. Cello, tuba, and it's a big production. Four tracks of background vocals, a main vocal, a chorus vocal, which looks like it might be doubling with the main vocal, and then some ooze at the end. Let's check and see what's happening with automation. I don't see a, much of anything. There's a little bit on this background vocal bus. Looks like there's some stuff here on the cymbals, but mostly fine. So let's just let's take a listen and see what we've got. I'm gonna set my volume kind of where I normally set it for mixing. I don't think there's a limiter on here. Uh, we'll turn that plug in off and let's just see, see what it sounds like. Okay, right out of the gate. Haven't done anything, but where I like to mix, like where I have my fader at zero, I've got my volume at the volumes I like for mixing. I don't know if you could even hear that. Very, very quiet. And if we're looking, let's see, the fader over here is at zero. But if we're looking at the, I like to use the K system for kind of my levels. I like to mix at like K20. So this is the K system here. K20 means I want my, the, my main mix level to be at about zero right here. And it is down, averaging down at like negative 24. It is like six times too quiet. So let's go to the louder section and see where that volume sits. Now, I'm all for mixes being on the quieter side, right? We can always add volume and mastering the overall volume. But right now, the dynamic of what, what Stuart's talking about is very true. The I would say the chorus... It's a pretty good volume. This is kind of where I normally set the volume for these kind of things. And it's it feels pretty good to me. Um, level wise. So that tells me when we go back to these verses, we're just sitting at. 
Okay. It's just very, very quiet. So um, you've diagnosed the problem correctly, Stuart. I think this is a coffee problem and it needs a coffee solution. I'll be back. There we go. Much better. I'm now ready to solve the case of the missing volume. I've been reading these um, Sherlock Holmes stories from like the 1800s. Super fun. And now I feel like a detective on this song. So here's the thing. I love songs. I love when I produce songs. I love it when the song lends itself to this kind of production where you start with maybe just a guitar and a vocal and then you build it out to something big at the end. What you'll notice, though, if you go to Spotify, Apple Music, listen to some of my songs, I've got several that start that way with just a guitar and a vocal and they grow and they build. What you'll notice, though, is that guitar vocal is at a good volume at the beginning and then it maintains throughout the song. And we add some volume, we add energy by adding more tracks as we go, but we don't add energy by taking my guitar and my vocal and turning it up. That's a key distinction. When you're producing songs like this, there's kind of two ways to produce a full band arrangement. That is a gross oversimplification, but bear with me. You can either have everyone in the band playing the entire song, and the way you achieve dynamics is by everyone playing louder and quieter together, right? Um, or by saying guitar and keys don't come in until the chorus and that gives you everyone plays normally and then when guitar and keys come in at the chorus it naturally has a lift because there's more things happening. We've added more energy, more volume, right? Um, or everyone's playing from start to finish. Like for example, when I play, I jammed last weekend with Tim and Joel, my drummer and bass player. It's just the three of us. So I can't really stop playing guitar. I can, but generally I'm going to be playing all the way through. So what I do is I play louder and softer, and we all play louder and softer to give that dynamic, right? So it's only, let's say, three tracks, drums, bass, guitar, and we increase and decrease our energy, our volume, our intensity to create the dynamics throughout the song. Now, that's one way of producing a song where the players themselves... There's a set number of players and they're bringing the energy, the low energy and the high energy. The other way is like this, where you're doing overdubs. You're adding, like this is, how many tracks do we have? Like 53 tracks. Um, and, it, and that seems like a lot at first till you realize it's mainly just a few groups of tracks. Drums, bass, acoustic, electrics, keys, background vocals, lead vocals, and then a few orchestral instruments. So like eight groups of things. Um, and as you can see, I love this kind of, progression here where there's not much happening on the left and it progressively gets more. The only place where this kind of broke down, and we can see it very clearly if we look at the vocal track. Let me zoom back out um, and this will help us see it. Zoom out. Okay. Um, is where we look at like the lead vocal here. It is significantly quieter here than at the end. So that means if you left the vocal that quiet, you're going to bring down the piano or whatever else is playing with the vocal or the, is it acoustic guitar? Yeah. And a pad at the beginning. And so now it looks like you're actually increasing vocal volume as you're increasing the production volume. And that's not necessary. What you can do is have a core set of tracks that just stay at a volume. So for me, those core tracks are things like drums. I'm not automating the drums much, if at all. Bass has a spot where it sits volume wise. The main rhythm instruments sit at a certain level and the vocal. I keep doing this. I'm counting with one thumb. One, one, one. Anyway, th those kind of stay where they are, and they can increase and decrease in volume a little bit to give us some dynamic, but then the big way we add some oomph is by adding and taking away more tracks on top of those. The problem is when you give too much volume movement to those core tracks, and that kind of blows everything else. So this is what I would do if I was producing or mixing this, and maybe you already did this trying to solve the problem, or maybe this is what caused the problem. I would take these tracks and I would slice them up. So these, like these vocals here, I'd probably do something like this. So now the vocal is more at a consistent volume from verse one. I live today. Life, my love, my hands. Now some of that you can increase, you can do, use compression to achieve some of that as well. But I would do kind of this same process throughout. So like. These background vocals, they were quieter and then got louder. They probably, and you'd have to listen, but they probably need to be a little bit louder. This cello here probably needs to just be louder in the first part. You can do this with automation, but honestly, it almost looks like someone went through and did this just in the opposite direction. Let's just bring the volume up. So I'm just hitting a keyboard shortcut to add three decibels of volume to whatever I have selected. 
um, this acoustic guitar. See how much louder it is? You look at it and you think, oh, that's fine, but it's actually a lot louder in the last part than the beginning part. So with just those adjustments, let's get this other guitar, same thing. That might be a, a mic on the same guitar. And let's take this one, same thing. Let's bump it up. Let's give it a couple more decibels. That's too many. Let's give this one another bump. I'm literally mixing with my eyes right now, right now. the thing I tell you not to do. But um, we're going to try it because I think we're going to fix the problem. Fingers crossed. But now let's just listen to the beginning now that we've just bumped up those things all by a few dB. So this is where I would have the volume at the beginning of the song. Um, I did that little bump with three decibels, but then I just went in and went nuts with it. So this vocal here, I've turned up by 11 dB, um, and then I turned those guitars up quite a bit as well. So it, it, this is very crude, but it gives you an idea of, I've got the volume where I am normally like to mix things, like I mentioned in the last video. This, this is where the volume needs to be. And then we get to the end of the song, and I haven't adjusted those volumes up yet. So you see what happened there? So we've got more vocals, louder vocals, like singing louder, but the actual, technically the waveform of the first set of vocals is bigger. It's technically louder, but it sounds louder in the final chorus because we've added so many more things. There's drums, there's bass, there's background vocals, there's all this other stuff. So this kind of, I'm going to wrap this up because I don't want this to go on any longer than it needs to, but that's my general advice is not even to do automation. Automation can get hairy because once you add automation, then you have to automate everything to make changes. Um, just bring the beginning vocals up. It would be my suggestion, Stuart. And then bigger picture, before you get this far into your mix, don't forget the most, one of the, what I would say is one of the most important steps of the mixing process, and I talk about this in my five-step mix guide and in my mixing course, is the static mix. The static mix is where you don't touch a plugin. You come in here, you remove all plugins, and you just move faders and do volumes. And then you'll immediately notice when you get to the next step, which is solve big problems, you'll notice if the vocal's completely disappearing in the verses or completely overwhelming in the chorus. And then you can solve that by doing something like this with this very simple event gain or by doing automation or maybe some kind of cool compression trick that evens out those volumes. I don't care how you accomplish it, but you should be able, when you get to that stage in your mix, before you start adding a bunch of plugins, when you hit play in the verse, I live today. you should be able to hear stuff. When you hit play in the chorus, it should probably be louder, but not 16 decibels louder. Right, So I think perhaps we've solved the mystery of the missing volume, uh, and it was simply a problem that can be solved during the simplest part of the mixing process, which is the static mix. You would immediately, when you're setting up that static mix, before you get into even editing, adding volume, or using plugins, you would make note, ah, the vocal is Dis when I get the vocal loud enough for that final chorus, it's disappearing. Same with the guitars. And then when you get to step three, which is the fix the big problems in the mix, you can fix those doing the things we're talking about here. The problem is when you, I've, I've given the advice to get the chorus sounding great and then work your way back to the quieter sections. That's true, but only when you've done those other steps. Only when you've listened to the entire mix and not touched any plugins and gotten all the levels right, then you can move in to start doing 
your top down mixing and all that stuff at the choruses and then back your way out to the rest of the song. Hope that was helpful for you. A little bit different today. Stuart, thanks for lending your song to us. Um, this should be a simple thing to fix. The tones are cool. Um, just get some of those balances right. Literally, just it's just a volume balance thing, and you'll be good to go. For the rest of you, if you haven't checked out my five-step mix guide, it's completely free. It'll walk you through that five-step process I've been talking about that will help you avoid making mistakes that end up frustrating you, and you'll get to the bottom of these issues a lot sooner. You can get that for free, absolutely free, at fivestepmix.com. Check it out. Hit the like button, huh? and I'll see you in the next one.